Okay guys, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I wanted to do a smokehouse update. Now this is the 5th of July, so this is midsummer, about as hot as it's going to get in, in Mississippi where we're at. Humidity's been around 80% the last couple of weeks. So if anything in this smokehouse that I have preserved, which is nothing but front shoulders off of deer, uh, if this gonna spoil, it'll be spoiled. So I wanted to show you how things is going, how things went, and we're gonna pull a piece of meat out of here, and I'm gonna show you what, how I figured out is a better way to use this. So uh, let's go inside, take a look, and see what it looks like in here. I'll zoom in here and let you get a better look, but there is a little bit of a brown mold that has just currently started growing on this. About two weeks ago I had cut off of this piece here to see what the inside looked like and there was no mold growing on this. And you can see it's like a fine dust. But now this is strictly on the outside. Now this one where I cut, it may have gotten on the edge of the inside but this has still got this white coated layer from the salt on it. So it's not really going to hurt anything. I will say this, the humidity has been extremely high, so the conditions, if anything's going to grow, it's going to grow right now. At this point with this meat, I would cook it. Like right here, I have been coming out here occasionally just basically for me to check it and see how it's turned out because, and cut a piece off of my pocket knife and eat it, just like this. I've done eat a whole one hanging up here that was that way. Uh, just sampling it here, there, and yonder. But now this in the last couple of weeks has started growing this mold. So at this point, I wouldn't cut anything off and eat it just like this. I would cook it. So we're going to show you here in just a minute how we pre prepare this for the cooking process to where this is not hurt because this mold is just a fine layer on the outside. You're going to wash it off. Uh, and we're going to soak it in water, so let me show you how we do that and, and show you how to prepare this. I wanted to try to get you a, a little bit of a look at this mold. And I'm hoping that this camera is picking it up. but it's just a fine powder growing and it's brown. I know the light is not real good in here. But you can see like right here and I'm holding this camera so it's a little shaky. Excuse me for that. But anyway, that's what it looks like. We've got our salt in here for, get my, collapse my tripod a little bit. We've got, this is pool salt, it's just salt. This is some of the Morton salt. I've been buying a bag along when I'm at Walmart or wherever and they have it in stock. With everything in the pandemic and the way shipping is right now, if you find something, you better get it if you're going to need it. Now, don't just be buying stuff you don't need, obviously. Uh, I'm going to have to do something with my pine box. See this dust on it? Let me look in here and show you. You see these little rows right here? That's dust. Now what that is, is in this lid, those little bitty bugs are getting in eating that wood. Now they, they get in a lot of my wood around here, so I'm going to do some research. I may have to... Uh, put pine tar or something on this box to to prevent them from eating on it because I don't want to use any poisons. If I mix pine tar and turpentine and put in there in just the lid, I don't want to put it down in what the meat's going to be sitting in. But if I do just the lid, it may deter them bugs. I'm going to do some research though before I do that. I don't know that that'll work or not. But it's just a small... I'm going probably to, I wanted to build this wood box because this is authentically what they would have used back in the old days, but I've got a couple of old coolers that have a drain plugged in that I'm probably going to put and line the rest of this 
with them and let them drain out and that floor is treated all this floor is treated so it won't matter but that's we'll be adding that later okay what I've got is my Yeti cooler because you want to keep this meat cool you don't want it to spoil right here um, and what I did is I filled it about half full of water and then I put a milk jug this is froze jug of water that I've had in the freezer for several weeks now you can see I had done put this in there but you can see those spots of mold just lightly on the outside this has not penetrated into the meat this is strictly growing right out here on the outside and this is really not a harmful mold contrary to what a lot of people's going to believe but now what I'm going to do right here is in this water so I'm going to just kind of wash this and then we're going to leave it to soak in there and I may change this water out here in a little while more than likely I will just because any of this that's on the outside as this starts to rehydrate that I wind up with a, a cleaner water so what I'll do is I'll pull the plug on this Yeti cooler drain all of this out and then I'll fill it back up with fresh water uh, probably not totally necessary but that's what I'm going to do so I would suggest that just so that anything floating in this water that come off of this mold don't just sit here and absorb into the meat but this meat now you've got to remember has been well coated with salt it has soaked in salt which somewhat preserves it but basically draws all the moisture out so anything you see on this meat is purely on the outside now I have eaten some of this meat before any of this grew on it which this just started when the humidity got up real bad here as of probably a month ago there was nothing on this meat uh, so that's one, one of the reasons I'm going to go ahead and see what to do because I don't see it really uh, I don't see things conditions improving from here on not to mention I want to do something with all this before uh, winter sets in because this fall I want to be able to prepare and, and put different meat in there I'm going to do full hams off of deer the hind quarters and such probably I may do a pig and put it in there we'll just have to see how things go but this water has clouded up so now that I'm done washing it just for the sake of let me pull it back here to the edge We'll drain all of that off. Let me go fill up a bucket of water while y'all watch that drain. Okay. Put the plug back in it. We've got that. So let me dump this fresh water over in here. All right. And we'll just let this sit in here and soak and uh, we'll get back with you and uh, in the morning this is after it's about three o'clock in the afternoon on Monday so tomorrow evening or tomorrow morning sometime I'll take you a look and I'll show you what this looks like all right we back this morning oh uh, this is soaked all night we put it about three o'clock yesterday and it's about 8 8 30 um, you can see the texture of this meat now it still has a dark tint that's going to be from the smoking and the aging but now it's clean all the mold is washed off there's some little spots here but you see how flexible this meat is it's it's not far from where it was when we before we ever started the process other than the color but the texture I mean it's it's a little bit stiffer in there and it could probably soak and I may let this soak a couple of more hours, probably around lunchtime. Now I still have ice in this jug a little bit. I don't know, it may have all melted. Looks like my jug is split. But that water is still very, very cold, like freezing cold. So that was one of the reasons I chose the Yeti cooler. Uh, I've got other coolers, igloos, but for just keeping temperature with the lid shut, this is the route to go. And uh, it's not just Yeti, you've got, there's other brands that'll do this, but these heavy duty coolers, they'll just hold that meat in this hot weather 
and it not be ruined the next day because you want to keep that temperature down once you start rehydrating it and especially with this warm atmosphere which today is a really nice day it's probably in the 70s right now and they're giving out rain so it's probably not going to get real hot today which is why i went ahead and gathered up a load of firewood i got lucky my neighbor had a oak tree cut in her yard and uh, they didn't clean it. It was going to cost her a lot to get it cleaned up. Uh, she asked me, and said, do you know anybody that will clean this tree up? I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> so it's right here in my yard. I said, it'll take me a little while. So I'm cutting it up a little at a time. And I spent part of Saturday down there cutting up this tree. And I'll turn a tr uh, camera around and show you. And this is going to be part of my smokehouse wood. What that was was what I call a pin oak. Um, it's a type of red oak. But this uh, wood is good wood for what I'm doing. In fact, I've cooked on it and everything, and I'd just about as soon as far as flavor use that wood over hickory. Uh, hickory leaves a strong fla flavor. I do like it, but I ain't a fan of pecan wood or, or some of the apple woods. They're just really strong, and I just particularly don't care for it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Some people love it. That's good for them. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take this, and I'm going to build a small fire in this little grill that I've got out here and I'm gonna cook strictly over wood I'm, I may wrap this in tinfoil and and cook it good but like I said earlier once you've seen mold grow on this I would highly recommend that it be cooked now this brown mold is not a toxic mold they're probably not just good for you but it's not gonna hurt you if it grows black molds uh, you want to stay away from it. If you see black mold growing on your meat, you want to discard it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything with it at that point. I would call it a loss. But if you'll read on the USDA websites on smoke curing meat, you can find a lot of information there. Now, if you just randomly look on the internet, you're going to see a lot of this, that, and the other that, that you don't know which one. A lot of people are going to say, if it's got any mold, throw it away. And, I, um, and if you're not sure about what you're doing, and you need to do more research than just particularly watching my video and, and running with that. You need to do some research because when you're fooling with plants and wild edibles and, and mushrooms and salt cured meat, things that you're not familiar with, you need to do more research than just watch one video. Uh, I know I'm just a redneck out here in the woods that's showing you how to do some things, but this is a, something that I am learning as well through this because these ways have gotten lost over the years. So we're trying to revive it. I, I've asked a lot of the old timers, I call them, the elders of the community, the people that was around it. And it's been so long since they've done it that they don't remember. I mean, they got refrigeration in the 50s and 60s and, and they quit doing this. Uh, so a lot of people, you know, now you've gotten so used. I, my dad told me about, he remembers them cutting the edge of the meat off and eating the meat he said he said the stuff that was growing on the meat back then he said people wouldn't have dare eat it today but they lived off of it then so that's why i'm telling you you've got to be careful do some research the usda website has has some good information on it if you get in there and, and you kind of got to dig around to find it but uh you can research this but we're going to build a fire in there and we're going to cook this on that grill and i may wrap it i probably cook it open for a 30 minutes or so and uh, then wrap it up in tinfoil we're going to use limited seasons because I want to see what the meat flavor is you can overpower with seasonings and and not have any flavor of the meat if you're not careful and a lot of people that's the way they want to cook and, and I'm not against that if that's what they want to do but if you really want to know what the meat tastes like don't overdo the season because this has had a lot of salt in it and I'm sure it's going to still have a strong salt flavor I don't know yet. That's one of the things I'm curious about and we're learning. We're going to find out. I'm going to show you my wood that I've brought up here so far. You can see right here. What I did here is I cut the tops out of this tree and I brought the whole sections up here and laid them down so that what I can do is as I get time, it's out of her yard. She's wanting it cleaned up so that she can cut her grass. So I got a lot of it out of the way and hauled it up here and then I hauled some over to my cabin over there that we have. We built, got an open fireplace in it. I've got a big stack of wood in there already, but I took about three of the bigger logs over there 
We're gonna just saw this up, and I don't know where I'm gonna stack it. My firewood rack's about full, but hey, it's midsummer, and you get it while it's available to be got. So we're gonna have plenty of wood to smoke with this year, and we're gonna do a lot of smoking different meats, smoking hides, and uh, and I'm also fixing to use in the coming months use my smokehouse to dry herbs in. Uh, Cause it's dry, the wind's not scattering stuff in there. You can hang it up in there. We're gonna—I know we're gonna collect a lot of goldenrod, but uh, probably a few wild lettuce plants, uh, a few other things that we're gonna gather and hang up in there just for medicinal purposes and and just for tea making. So, y'all stick with. Them. I cut up a round—I call it just one piece of a log the length that I needed and I'm gonna lay one right here kind of toward the front and then I generally lay one kind of in the back and make a where I can get a little V to burn into now this is shavings from where I was working on a bow you may have saw part of that video we hadn't finished the bow we just working on it a little at a time but now I've got my wood piled up right down here that I cut, and it, didn't, it don't take a lot. I'll show you right quick. I just piled it right there, a little bit of wood. A lot of people talk about how hard it is to cook over wood and other stuff's easier. This this is fairly simple. Now, I do wish that I had a better grill set up where I could feed those logs in a lot easier. This is real small. This is more of like a tailgate grill, but it works good for what I'm doing right here. I have a bigger one up on the the uh, porch, and then I've got the one over here on the trailer that I cook with, but always needing something different. We try to learn how to make do with what we've got. Oh. Uh, but once I've got that going, I just gather up what I call kindling, and that's just these small twigs off of stuff because they will burn really good. I've split one of them wedges up into some smaller pieces. Now this this wood has been laying out, it's been rained on, so it's not as dry as I like it. Uh, that tree was cut last fall. So the wood's six months old, but it's been laying out getting rained on. It's not been under my rack. So that's why it's smoking so bad, but that'll keep moisture in my... Okay, I've just got a few simple seasonings, and I'm going to just kind of go light on it here. I ain't going to try to really overpower it. But I'm just going to wrap it up in tinfoil. Now, I'm probably going to leave the tinfoil open for the first little bit. And then, uh, and when I'm saying light on seasoning, I, I, I put a little... I like a lot of seasoning, so... This is light to me. It may be a lot to you. <laughs> but this will just be on the surface. It won't, when I, normally when I cook meat, I really pack it thick on there when I'm doing this. This is just to add a little bit of flavor. Now, okay. now I've got a good flame going here. I'm going to fold these ends up. Basically, what I'm wanting to do with the tinfoil right now is trap the juice. I don't want it to drip all out. But when I close this lid, I'm still going to be getting a good bit of smoke into that meat. And then in a little while, I'll come seal this completely up with and use this piece. I'm just going to keep it out here so I'll have it. Now, I'm probably going to leave this wide open. And as it burns down, I'm going to try to slide... A log up in there and I'll have to play with that regulate my temperature because this is a really small grill and it'll, it's liable to get really hot 
Okay, this has been cooking about, I don't know, an hour and a half, something like that. I wanted to make sure I got plenty of heat. Now what I did, I got my always container that I always have with me, my shirt. I washed some potatoes out of my, out from under the smokehouse. Since we're using the smokehouse for potato storage, what better thing to do than to use some of the potatoes out from under it in our smokehouse update? What y'all think? I always got my shirt with me so I can care about whatever in it. Open it out. It's not going to seal airtight, which would probably be optimal. But that'll be okay. In other words, all it'll do is it'll be a little drier than I particularly like it. Uh, you seal this this pretty much airtight, most of all of your moisture will stay in there. But the only moisture that we have now, remember, is where we soaked it overnight. So, all right, y'all. I've had this cooking probably most of the day. Uh, I'm thinking about just dragging the whole thing on this paper plate, and I ain't no fan of paper plates, but uh, this is one of them cardboard like. Well, you give me one of them styrofoam, and nah, I throw that in the garbage. I don't, I don't be eating off them. You pocket knife or go slam through it, and then you, you got a mess in your lap. I don't know why people, people are too lazy to wash dishes, and they go feeding you off of them. I'm gonna get these potatoes off. I'll show you they well I'm gonna dump everything. I'll get it where I can cut. But see that's that's done. You can just kinda I'll show you the back side of that knife. Y'all know my knife's sharp. But you can go through that with the back side so you know we're done. I'm gonna get all these potatoes off. My wife done told me she wasn't gonna eat it, so she she you I ain't, I'm gonna be honest with you, she said I ain't eating nothing out of that smokehouse. Times get hard, she gets hungry, I bet she'll eat out of it. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna sit down at this table and y'all can watch me eat over there. Let me get sot down here now. Old country boy here don't, don't really need no knife, but them potatoes might have could have used a little salt. I ain't put nothing on them, that's just potatoes. But probably what I'll do is I'm going to sample a little of this and uh, let y'all see what goes on with it. Talk about the flavor. And then I'll carry it in the house and finish eating it. That first bite, which is close to the edge, it was salty enough. Depends on how much you like salt, and I do like salt, so it's not a problem for me, but it is... You wouldn't want to put over a lot of salt on there. And that's one of the reasons I didn't season this a whole lot before I cook it. Mm. Kind of warm, man. Mm. Now, I like mine cooked a little more with a uh, sealed up. I was just kind of makeshift cooking out here. But now, front shoulder and a choice piece of meat to begin with, which is just would you stop? If I come out here and go to talking, they get all excited. Good though. You see, we didn't get our rain today. They give out rain, but that bunch of clowns, they too busy worried about a hurricane. I don't even know if really classified as a hurricane anymore. The only reason they can get that, but they focus on that because they pretty much guaranteed that it's coming. They can get that right. I wish I had a, put it in one of my pans. The reason I didn't put it in a pan 
and put on that grill. That grill's real small. And I didn't want to tote everything up to the porch to cook it on the other grill. So what I got to do, being that I like to cook down here by this picnic table and I'm a, while I'm working out here, I need to get me a, build me a bigger grill that I can cook with wood on down here. That's big enough you can use like a smoker. And I could have fired the big smoker up probably just as easy. But you're guaranteed to take six hours. This I cook probably four hours. So, and you can see some of this got really tough. But I did want to make sure that I cooked it thoroughly. The dog appreciates it. But it is good. It does, it does have a salty flavor to it. Anyway, this is the first time we really cooked and eaten out of the smokehouse. That dog is hungry. I just fed it the other week. No whining thing. Dogs think they gotta eat. Act like they want to eat every day. I feed my dog every day. <laughs> You like taters? Dog make it to eat chicken. They don't crow like that until I come out here and start filming. It's like they watch that camera and the tripod go up. Uh, hey, we can irritate him now. We'll get him back for being stuck in these cages out here. But I get them back, I'll make chicken noodle soup. I have no qualms about putting a $50 rooster on the grill. Talking about some other people, though. I was laughing the other day on a video about Stephanie Abrams, but doggone it. I was watching another weekend when that other hurricane was coming. Oh, Jim Cantore. He was up in there. It may have been after. I don't remember if it was a hurricane or not. But anyway, he had on a suit. He had lost a coat too. They were about three different colors. I don't know. I think they're just trying to put on a circus up there or something. I guess since Barnum and Bailey's out of business, the Weather Channel's trying to take up your slack. Maybe. I mean, that's mighty nice of them to be doing that. But man, I'd hate to know my profession. I had to dress like that. They probably laugh at how nasty I am. But... Well, y'all know if I don't come back with another video, this didn't work out, but if it did, we'll be back with another one before long on Spirit of the Outdoors. Thank y'all for watching.